This photograph shows a gametophyte fern that is only about 2 mm wide. Up until recently, it would have been impossible to take a deep focus photograph at this magnification because the technology did not exist. But just recently, that has changed. The photograph was taken with an ordinary digital SLR camera, a microscope objective and a little bit of DIY construction work. In making this video, we are hoping to show how this technology works so that other research labs and individuals can build the same kind of setup and start to share images of their own tiny photographic specimens. So how exactly was it done? The technique involved is called focus stacking and in order to understand focus stacking, we need to know about depth of field. Depth of field is an important concept in plant photography. Professional photographers use depth of field to highlight the subject of the photograph while making the background seem to shrink back and become less distracting. In this photograph, we can see that the flowers of an apple tree are in sharp focus while the branches in the background are out of focus. This is done so that the branches of the tree do not distract the viewer from looking at the main subject. The same technique has been used with these beech leaves, which are kept in sharp focus so that they can be clearly examined. The background is left blurred so that it is not distracting to the eye. Depth of field is controlled by changing the size of the aperture of the lens. Here we can see the aperture of a lens is becoming smaller and smaller as the F number of the lens is increased. Special terminology is used to discuss depth of field. The plane of the scene that is most in focus is called the focus point. The distance from the camera sensor to the focus point is called the focus distance. When a small camera aperture is used, we have a large depth of field and then we will see a deep plane of the photograph is in focus. Conversely, when a large aperture is used, we will have a shallow depth of field and only a shallow plane of the photograph will be in focus. Photographers use depth of field in many ways to enhance their photographs. Returning to our lens with its gradually reducing aperture, we can then take some photos to show the effect that this reducing aperture has on the images produced in the camera. With a large aperture, this holly leaf appears in sharp focus and the background is blurred. As the aperture is reduced with successive photographs, the background comes increasingly into focus. This is the principle of depth of field. Very different effects are encountered when we switch to tiny subjects photographed at high magnification. This is a fern gametophyte with two young leaves from the fern sporophyte just emerging from the young plant. The photograph was taken by Professor M. B. Wilkins, who was Regius Professor of Botany at the University of Glasgow from 1970 until the year 2000. When subjects of this tiny size are photographed at high magnification, it becomes very difficult to get a large enough depth of field to bring the whole subject into focus. We can see here that while the gametophyte is in sharp focus, the sporophyte leaves are not. This is in spite of the fact that the image was taken with great care. The camera was set to have a tiny aperture for maximum depth of field. This meant that hot lights were needed in order to produce enough light to enable a photograph to be taken in a reasonable exposure time. This in turn meant that the subject had to be housed in a glass tank in order to prevent it from shriveling up. In the 1990s, this was the best photographic technology that was available, but it was not quite enough to bring the sporophyte leaves into focus. In plant developmental biology, it is important to be able to document the shapes of plants that are being studied so that the developmental processes can be fully investigated at the molecular and physiological level. For example, in gametophyte fern development, the pattern of individual cell divisions is studied as it is completely consistent from one plant to the next and produces very interesting patterns of tissue and organ development. 
It is currently so difficult to photograph tiny specimens like this that line drawings have to be used to fully document the structures instead of photographs. Focus stacking is a new photographic technique that is being used to enable scientists to take fully focused photographs of tiny specimens at high magnification. This is a photograph of a fern gametophyte that was photographed using focus stacking technology. As you can see, the plant is fully focused and it is possible to study the pattern of the cells and their position. Examining a series of photographs showing the development of the gametophyte would enable scientists to figure out the pattern of cell division. This could then be connected back to the pattern of gene expression that brings these cell divisions about. So how does focus stacking work? This is the focus stacking equipment that we have designed and built ourselves. It is a low cost system and is based on the BRAT cam, which was created by Chris Slaybaugh. The tiny fern is on a platform under the polystyrene cup on the left. The camera on the right is sitting on a platform that is being slowly winched in a series of steps towards the photographic subject. It moves 17 micrometers for each step. After each movement, a photograph is taken. It takes about 40 steps to move the plane of the camera's focus right through the gametophyte fern from the front to the back. We now see the series of photographs that are taken. In focus stacking terminology, these photographs are called slices. Once all the photographs have been taken, the focused areas of the photographs are cut out and amalgamated into one single photograph in which all of the parts of the fern are in focus. There are several pieces of commercial software that can do this work, including Helicon Focus, Zerine Stacker and Photoshop. I used Helicon Focus to compile this photograph. Here is another example of the series of photographs that are taken as the camera moves its plane of focus through a gametophyte fern. And this is the compiled image that combines all of the focused parts from the images or slices. This is the technique of focus stacking that we are using to take deep focus images of tiny subjects. If you would like to read more about our focus stacking work, or about the photography of Professor M.B. Wilkins, or about the Brat Cam by Chris Slaybaugh, please visit chlorophilosophy.uk.